project's called Digi Stories, and it's about getting engineers to tell their own personal stories. As engineers, we tend to talk to people in a rather strange way, actually. But if you want to communicate with other people, with lay people, we need to talk in a narrative, because stories is how people have communicated through the ages. Well, what I've got here is Katie Good's story, really made up of a lot of stills. So we've got a picture here of her and her child on the beach, and later on we've got her as an adult. And the idea is we start the sessions off by looking at and talking about what stories are and doing some exercises to learn about storytelling. We then write a script and look at what photos we've got from the past which might inspire that story. They record the script and then we load all the photos and voice onto an editing package and we put nice transitions and some movement into them and then you have your digital story and on the last day we give it a world premiere. I think they probably all have it, because we all tell stories, but we don't tell stories about engineering. So it's showing them how they can take their engineering and their life of, of work and actually turn it into something that connects to normal people, or should I say everyday people, because engineers, of course, are normal. I feel quite envious of the people who've done the Digi Stories, because I wish I'd had that training when I was younger, because I had to learn it all on the job and stand up and do live interviews with no preparation. And wouldn't it have been great to have been told how to give narrative and put it across in a really great way. If you look at what children think about engineering, they have very narrow and rather misconstrued views of what engineers do. And okay, they may not come to study acoustics because they see my digi story about acoustics, but if they go off and do engineering somewhere else, I think we've really succeeded. And that's what I'm hoping to achieve by doing things like ingenious training engineers to be better communicators, especially to children. When I first started, I was absolutely terrified of working with children. I thought anything under four foot was quite scary. Now for me, I kind of term an engineer as somebody who solves problems. So what you're going to be doing today is you're going to be solving a problem. It's got little sensors on it, and those sensors are constantly looking for this black line. We're trying to encourage the children to consider the problems related to going into space. We have four different buggies and we're trying to work out which one will be best to send to Mars. So we're giving them four different control scenarios. We're asking the children to test each one and then to feed back what they think is good about each buggy, what they think is bad about each buggy and to consider the real life practicalities of if we were going to send that buggy to Mars. We're trying to get their minds working and thinking about problems and how to go about solving them. Are you going to try and do a little dance? If you press that yellow button, there we go. Have a little Martian disco. <laughs> One of the big surprises for me has been how many girls have been wanting to get involved. I think that's a fantastic thing. I, I think when we initially discussed the idea of robots, I think a lot of people thought it's quite a boyish thing and girls might not want to get involved. But some of the groups have just been all girls, which has been absolutely incredible, and they're just as into it as the guys. Unlike all the films and cartoons I'm sure you've seen where they say, don't hurt that big red button, don't touch it, this one, big red button is a really good button. Obviously children think in completely different ways to adults, so it's one thing giving a presentation at work to clients or contractors, but when you're faced with 15 children, the questions you get are completely different, have a completely different wavelength. You wouldn't want to send any of them to Mars. That's true, they could run out of batteries. Definitely encourage anybody who's thinking about getting involved in workshops like this to really go for it. It's so much fun, you get so much out of it. My confidence has absolutely skyrocketed. It just makes such a nice change to actually see engineering, even yourself, to see engineering in a different way. We were basically taking engineering concepts to schools and so that younger children have an idea of what it's about because especially as a lot of younger children think of engineers and think of scientists as just people in white lab coats so we basically went into schools to tell them something different. They were quite surprised especially because half of the group were female and most people don't associate girls with engineering. We had to go into schools, come up with activities and different methods to increase their road safety awareness. For example, we were looking at acceleration and deceleration and forces when you hit the floor if you're on your bike. So basically increasing their safety by wearing cycle helmets and addressing the concepts of, of why a cycle helmet will actually protect you. 
My concept was to use eggs um, to represent the human skull and we gave them to the children to drop with and without various methods of protection. So when they drop the egg on the floor without anything to protect it, it just smashed, which we were trying to demonstrate was like your skull if you fell off your bike and you weren't wearing a helmet. Then we gave the children various different materials such as polystyrene and bubble wrap to see which ones protected the egg and which ones didn't. I learned basically to talk to children. I had no idea how different it would be. And actually trying to teach someone engineering rather than just, say, explain it to one of your engineering friends. So different. It was a welcome break whilst being informative and educational as well. So yeah, that's what I got out of it. So many, like 150 eggs <laughs> or so. Some were boiled, some weren't boiled, some were just thrown across the classroom. The older children thought it was funny to throw them across the classroom and just smash them everywhere. It took days to clean up and I'd be happy if I'd never see an egg again. <laughs>